Every year, about 2 billion simple pencils are sold in the United States, and 14 billion are sold all around the world. But how do they make so many? Well, it all starts with getting the basic materials. A pencil needs three main things, graphite, clay, and wood. First, they get graphite, which is a type of carbon found naturally in mines all over the world. The best graphite, called vein graphite, comes from places like Sri Lanka and Madagascar. At the same time, they collect clay from different places to use in the pencil center. This clay determines how hard the pencil is and how dark the lead writes. Besides graphite and clay, they also need wood. The most common wood they use is cedar, especially from California. Choosing the right wood is important because cedar smells nice for a long time, stays straight, and doesn't bend. Pencil makers usually make sure they get their wood from forests that are managed responsibly so they don't harm the environment. Once they have the materials, they start making the pencil's core. First, they grind the graphite and clay into very fine powders separately. How much graphite they mix with the clay decides how hard or soft the pencil lead will be. More graphite means softer lead, and less graphite means harder lead. Then, they mix the powdered graphite and clay with water to make a smooth paste. They refine this paste to make sure it's all the same. After that, they push the mixture through a machine to shape it into long, thin rods. These rods are then cut into pieces that will become the pencils. This way of mixing graphite with clay goes back to a chemist named Nicolas Jacques Conte. He figured it out when there wasn't enough graphite in the late 1700s. Conte found that mixing powdered graphite, powdered clay, and water, then molding and baking it, made something that wrote as well as pure graphite. This discovery was so important that we still use it to make pencils today. After preparing the pencil cores, the next step is to wrap them with wooden covers. These covers are usually made from cedar wood. The cedar arrives at the factory already dried, colored, and coated with wax to stop it from bending. Then, logs are cut into thin strips called slats. Each slat is about 7.25 inches long, 0.25 inches thick, and 2.75 inches wide. The slats are put into a feeder and placed one by one onto a moving conveyor belt. This belt moves them at a steady speed. Each slat goes under a big cutting wheel that makes grooves in them. These grooves will hold the pencil lead. As the slats move along the conveyor belt, half of them get a layer of glue applied to them. The cut pencil cores are then placed in the grooves of these slats. The slats without glue and without pencil cores are put on another belt. This belt takes them to a machine that flips them over so that the grooves are facing down. The two conveyor belts come together and each unglued wooden piece is placed over a piece with glue and graphite, making a sandwich. Once taken off the conveyor belt, these sandwiches are squeezed together by a hydraulic press in a metal clamp. They stay clamped until the glue dries. After that, the pencils go through shaping machines. These machines give them their familiar six-sided shape, which is popular because it's easy to hold and won't roll off tables. This shaping happens in two steps. First, the top part of the machine makes three sides, then the bottom part makes the other three sides. When the bottom sides are done, the pencils separate. After shaping, the pencils are sanded to make them smooth. This step gets rid of any bumps and makes them nice to hold. Then, they get a protective coating to make them stronger and look better. This coating, like lacquer or enamel, is put on, and the pencils are left to dry and get polished until they're smooth. Sometimes, pencils might get extra treatments like being heated up to make them stronger and less likely to break. Many pencils have erasers on one end, which makes them useful for writing and fixing mistakes. These erasers are usually made of synthetic rubber or a mix of rubber and other stuff. The idea of putting an eraser on a pencil goes back to Hyman W. Lippmann, an American. In 1858, he got a U.S. patent for it. Then in 1872, Joseph Reckendorfer bought the patent for $100,000. Making an eraser starts with putting rubber in a machine called a mill. 
the rubber goes between big, heated rollers over and over again. Other things like pigments, fillers, and vulcanizing agents are added between the rollers. They mix it all up really well to make sure everything's evenly spread. Vulcanization is a big step in making erasers. It happens in special machines called vulcanization presses. These machines use heat and pressure to change the rubber into a stronger form. This not only makes it bouncier, but also better at erasing pencil marks. To make plugs for attaching erasers to pencils, they usually use a process called extrusion. They push the mixture, which is like a soft solid, through a special tool to make a long cylinder. As it comes out, they cut it repeatedly to make plugs for the erasers. Then, they put a metal or plastic piece, called a ferrule, on the other end of the eraser and attach the whole thing to the pencil. Some parts of this process might be done by machines, but some steps are still done by hand. Pencils are usually first packed in big groups to send to stores. They pack lots of pencils into strong cardboard boxes. These boxes can hold hundreds or even thousands of pencils of different sizes. For pencils sold directly to people in stores, they use retail packaging. This usually means putting pencils in sets or packs. They arrange the pencils nicely and keep them safe in cardboard, plastic, or blister packs. The packaging might also have the brand name, info about the product, and barcodes to scan easily when buying. Before pencils are sent out to stores, they go through a careful check. They travel on a moving belt during the making process. Workers are trained to throw away any pencils that don't look right, and some are sharpened and tested. Sometimes, a problem happens where the glue doesn't stick properly, but usually they catch this when they cut the pencils. Even though many things are electronic now, the pencil business is still getting bigger. Right now, the worldwide pencil market is worth $15.95 billion, and experts think it will go up by 7% by 2028. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in more about how everyday items are made in factories, consider subscribing to FactoryFi.